Hi guys, in this practice we will create a physical standby database. We will go through the step-by-step -step procedure to create a physical standby database using the appliance that we created in the last practice. Th this practice is gonna be a long one, but it is uh, the most important uh, practice in the, uh, in the course because the appliance we're going to create in this practice will be the basis for all future practices in the course. We will clone two appliances in this practice. The total size of 42 GB of disk space will be used by those appliances. This figure shows the specs of the databases that we created in the last in the last practice. We have a single instance database which has a name AuraDB and it is connected to an ASM instance which is linked to three ASM disk groups, CRS, Data and FRA. We're gonna create a standby database which has the name AuraDB underscore S2. The host name of the new machine will, will be SRV2. We're gonna use SQL Plus for uh, managing this uh, uh, simple data guard environment and the fast start failover will be disabled. And the protection mode of the standby database will be maximum performance. In high level, the practice will be implemented in four stages. First, we will prepare the practice environment. Then we will uh, implement some steps to prepare the primary database. After that, we prepare the standby system. And finally, we create the standby database. When we prepare the practice environment, we will clone the Oracle database appliance twice. One will be used as a primary database and the other will be used as a standby database. Then we have to do some basic configuration in both of them, like fixing the network configuration and uh, de de deleting the database from the standby database appliance. Then we will go through the steps to prepare the primary database and go through further steps to prepare the standby system. First, we have to make a clone of the database appliance, the last appliance that we created. And when we make a clone of that one, we don't have to initialize the network card because we don't want to change the MAC address in it. When we clone that appliance, we will give it the name primary database or primary DB. We have now the primary database appliance ready. Now we will clone the appliance to create our standby system. We'll give it a name, physical standby DB. But remember, you need to reinitialize the MAC address of this appliance. So we have here two uh, appliances. One uh, will be used as a primary database and the, the other one will be used as a physical standby database. They both were cloned from the Oracle DB 12C uh, appliance. We need to fix some issues in the physical standby database system. First, we have to fix the MAC address in it. So I need first to obtain the MAC address, uh, the new MAC address that has been assigned to this uh, appliance. So I opened a notepad file to save the MAC address assigned to the appliance. I'll go to settings of the physical standby database system and get the MAC address from over there. Then I start the appliance. After that, I log in as root to the physical standby database system open terminal and I need to fix the MAC address in this file. I get rid of the section underneath and fix the MAC address in the section on the top. I 
after that I fix uh, the MAC address in the other file ifcfg fix the MAC address over there In next step I need to drop the database that is running over there because uh, I'm going to create a new one that will be used as a standby database I'll use uh, the DBCA to delete the database running in the physical standby database system remember we are working with the physical standby database not the primary database so I log in as uh, Oracle to the physical uh, database system The resolution of my uh, appliance is uh, very low. I need to increase it to make it big enough to be able to uh, view the uh, wizard windows, the DBCA wizard windows. So I'll go to system, preferences and uh, display and increase the resolution of my appliance. I run DBCA, Database Configuration Assistant, and drop the database. In the next step, we have to change the host name and the IP address of the physical standby database. I'm going to use the system config uh, network utility to change the host name and the IP address. Remember, I need to run the utility as root. So I log in as root and run the uh, utility system config network. I made the IP address in, in my in my case uh, 125 then I have to go to the DNS uh, configuration section to change the host name over there I'll make the host name SRV2 Here I'm verifying the changes that I have done. We need to make the changes in the hosts file as well. I need to fix the uh, IP address and the host name over there. I need also to fix the host name in the listener.ora file so I, I will switch to the grid user and ch uh, fix the host name in the listener.ora file. Change it from SRV1 to SRV2. I'll reboot uh, the system now. In the next step, I'm going to start the primary database appliance and uh, verify that the database is up and running. I have just started the primary database. I will log in as Oracle and verify that the database is running over there. SRVCTL status database minus d and followed by the database name the database is up and running 
Now I will make some configurations in the putty to make it ready for connecting to the primary database and the standby database. SRV1 and SRV2. For each of them, you need to set the seconds between keep alive. In my case, I set it to five seconds. The next step is to configure the hosts file in both machines so that SRV1 and SRV2 can see each other. So I'll open two sessions for to connect to SRV1 and SRV2 and implement this step in both of them. I connect first to uh, SRV1, then I connect to SRV2. To distinguish between the sessions I uh, open in PuTTY to connect to SRV1 and SRV2, I'll make the font color of the sessions created for SRV2 as green. I'll save the configuration and open a session. This way it, it makes it easier for me to distinguish between sessions of SRV2 and SRV1 sessions. I'll open the hosts file in both of them and make the configuration changes to make each of them see each other. I'll test the changes by pinging each machine. Pinging SRV1 from SRV2, yes, all sounds good. In the next step, we need to reconfigure the Oracle Restart because we changed the host name in the standby database uh, system. We have to reconfigure the Oracle Restart. So we will remove it and create it again from scratch. So first we need to run the script root has.pl. Uh, this uh, Perl script needs to be uh, run as root. So I'll run this script and uh, as root in SRV2. Remember we need to run it, to run it in SRV2, not SRV1. Then I'll add the ASM to the new Oracle Restart configuration. It does take some time to finish. Then we will add the ASM back to Oracle Restart. As a grid, you run this command srvctl add asm and then run the asm instance. We need to recreate the sp file for the asm, so uh, our plan will be to create a temporary p file that will be used by the asm and then we will create the sp file from there. So I'll make a temporary directory where I will save the temporary uh, p file. I'll create the p file and put the parameters in it. Mount the disk group because this is the disk group. I'm going to save the SP file in. Now 
Then I create the SP file from the B file. Shut down the instance and start it up again. As you can see, after restarting the ASM, it has started using SP file. I'll try now to stop the ASM using SRVCTL just for the sake of uh, testing to make sure everything uh, works fine. I'm connecting ASM CMD to make sure all the disks are mounted. As you can see, all the disks are mounted successfully to the ASM. Finally, I will restart the high availability service. So we have uh, recreated successfully the Oracle restart configuration and configured the ASM in it. We need now to add a listener to the uh, Oracle restart configuration. and start it. In the next step, we need to set the local listener parameter in the primary database to null. The idea behind that is to make the database uh, dynamically registers itself in the default listener running in the grid home. Remember, we need to run this in SRV1 machine. So we're going to work in the session with the white font. So far, we have prepared our practice environment. We have uh, a primary database up and running, and we have a standby system, a standby appliance, which has Oracle Restart configuration and an ASM instance. It doesn't have any database running in it. The primary system is SRV1, and the standby system is SRV2. Now we are ready to implement the second phase of this practice, which is to prepare the primary database.